Go to Ibrahim Dosara, who is the Commissioner for Information, Zamfara says he joins us virtually. Good morning and thank you for joining us on the program. Well, it is that directive that the state has taken that is raising a lot of concerns. So could you tell us how did the state arrive at this point? Okay, um, thank you and good morning. The issue of uh, directive uh, became necessary to the government of Zamfara State. Uh, what we are doing is uh, to give the protection uh, to lives and property of people, which is the basic function of government. Uh, we have been trying uh, so many ways and processes to ensure that uh, people are secured. Uh, if people uh, could remember at the early stage of this government, uh, like uh, many of uh, the people who spoke earlier said, we engaged the bandit in a dialogue uh, where we had very huge success. Uh, Zamfara State was uh, over nine months without an incident of insecurity, uh, not until when conflict entrepreneurs came in to sabotage that process and scuttle the success we had. And uh, the governor, uh, being uh, somebody who is on top of uh, issues concerning security, who has the security of lives and uh, of people uh, at his heart, also gave the bandits uh, ultimatum of six months within which to embrace the peace process. And uh, when they refused, the governor embarked again on a larger scale of uh, fight against the bandit where he uh, uh, ordered for shutting down communications. He all, also closed down markets, roads, and uh, restricted uh, vehicular movements, uh, a process that also helped in reducing the scale of armed banditry in the state. If people could recall, before he came on board as the governor of the state, he met very, very ugly situation where almost uh, 200 people, 100 and people, uh, 100 uh, people are being killed on daily basis. But today, the story has been changed. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Dosara. Before you progress, I mean, well, concerning how the state got to this point, Mr. Gusau lays the blame squarely at the feet of the government, saying uh, mistakes were made. You. The government engaged those people in the first place. You invited them to government house. You know their families. You know the members. And so coming up with this is a bit of a surprise because there are several other options perhaps he suggests that could have been taken as opposed to saying, all right, go get guns. Because they wonder, what happened to equipping the police to ensure that uh, they are capable to rout those people? If you know the people, you know them. Why this method? You see, forget about Busso. Uh, he is politicizing security, which uh, we shouldn't uh, mind. We don't mind about Busso. He was even suggesting that uh, we set up a structure of uh, security forces that can fight this. We invite him and challenge him to come and be the Commandant General. We have such a structure on ground. If he is truly uh, having some for security at hand, let him come and be the Commandant General to do this. But all we have been doing is to ensure that we explore a uh, uh, reliable source of or rather process of bringing security to the people. So um, like you mentioned, that why don't we empower police or do whatever? You know, security is in the hands of the federal government. What Zamfara state or other gov state governments are doing is to complement the efforts of the federal government in providing security. And you know, security is not just the responsibility of government. Everybody has a responsibility the, to- I beg your pardon, Honorable Dasara and Mr. Dasara. You know, the, the thing about that is, Concerning the police and empowering the police, yes, we know the responsibilities of government when it comes to security, but if the police is not capable, if they don't have that capacity to rein these people in, 
What gives you the guarantee that when you then arm, um, assuming there were 9,500, as the report said, that you're preparing licenses for 9,500 people, how do you then think that if these men go rogue, you can then handle them? No. You see, uh, the process that we set in is a clean process. We, we started by saying let people wishing to obtain legitimate uh, weapons uh, come to fill the forms. They are to be scrutinized and screened at their localities by their traditional rulers to ensure that uh, no wrong hand or somebody with criminal records uh, are given the license to obtain a gun. And don't forget, uh, only two people are allowed to issue license uh, on the basis of qualification, the Mr. President and then the Inspector General of Police. And what we said is when we fill these forms, we take them to the Commissioner of Police to do his own investigations and also screen the people before he forwarded to um, uh, uh, Inspector General of Police, who will then finally consider approving and giving the license. So what we are doing, we are following legitimate process to make sure that our people are given the legitimate weapons to protect themselves. Okay. Uh, don't forget, uh, uh, I mean, uh, we took this uh, decision because uh, the rainy season has commenced and the farmers want to go back to their farms to okay. produce food for people, for food security in the community and in the nation. Mm. And also, uh, following recent upsurge in some parts of the state where the uh, criminals have been attacking people uh, almost on a daily basis. Well, Mr. We Sarah, on that, just a quick one on that. Uh, if you can, you know, take yes. us through a little further on the process. Me, there are a number of issues. Me. Just, just one second. There are a number of issues that uh, Mr. Guso has raised, which I would love for you to respond to before we go back to him. But tell us more about the process of people securing you know, guns, the legitimacy of it, because there are those who are asking questions as to whether or not it is legal for anyone to get guns in any part of Nigeria for themselves. Uh, take us through the legitimacy of that. Uh, take us through the, the agencies of government, whether federal or state, that have to go, th that people who want to secure guns legitimately have to go through. I understand, for instance, that f for you to be able to get that done, your mental state has to be in place, and then there needs to be some kind of background check on you to be sure that you have no connection with people who have already, as Jimelin said, gone rogue. Take us through that process. Yes, like I told you, um, we, we are not giving guns or planning to give guns to anybody, but we are planning to give, uh, I mean, position to people to protect themselves because uh, it is allowed in a situation like a more warlike. You understand? Our situation is like a more, uh, more uh, warlike situation in Zamfara State. And like I told you, we have five local governments where uh, this issue is becoming uh, deteriorating. And it is the reason why we said, okay, since um, we have tried so many ways uh, to curtail this insecurity, uh, some are being sabotaged by complete interpreters. Okay, the best option now is to allow people to uh, defend themselves, especially in their farms, uh, because uh, it is rainy season, like I mentioned earlier, and the people need to go back to uh, provide food for their families. Our government has been doing everything uh, to ensure that uh, uh, it's kill lives of people and their property. Right. And on the pro we're talking about, uh, like I said, the Nigerian Constitution says only two people can grant license to obtain legitimate uh, weapons in Nigeria. That is Mr. President and the Inspector General of Police. And the now that we have an existing ban on the issuance of license to obtain or to possess uh, legitimate weapons, All right. uh, we are in consultation uh, with the presidency and the high security commands in Nigeria to ensure that uh, permission is given to the IGP 
to issue license to qualify people of Zamfara State who want to possess weapons to defend themselves. And this All right, is Mr. Desar, in addition to the response that you may want to give to what they've said, for those who think that this is a desperate move on the part of the state government and that it's not well thought out, because they wonder, yes, you say you're not giving guns to just anybody. You want those who are qualified to get the guns. And they also wonder, even at that, looking at the framework, for instance, there will always be chances that someone might misuse their firearm, whether or not they legitimately got it. We see that happen several times in different areas. Things like the measures to investigate and find out people are properly policed, they don't misuse all of those. That framework is not in place. So that's why some other persons think we may just have a challenge with quote and unquote qualified people getting access to guns. Okay, um, thank you so much. Um, even though there was uh, interruption, I couldn't get most of the questions you asked. But uh, like you said, response to uh, people who spoke earlier, uh, Mr. Busso has said that uh, people have no money to buy uh, the weapons we are trying to um, help them to buy. You see, we didn't say everybody in the United States must buy gun or weapons. What we said is people who could afford, people who have interest to provide those weapons that are legitimately uh, allowed to defend themselves. That's what we said. We didn't say everybody, every Zamfara person must get a gun or must get weapons to defend themselves. We say those who could afford and those who have interest. Uh, it is not by force. And two, he was asking of uh, whether we, we should have a, a strong uh, uh, force uh, comprising uh, a kind of uh, legion. We have this structure on ground. We have recruited, like I said earlier, 300 uh, persons that we, we, we gave nomenclature as community protection guards. And these people have been working. 300 uh, were recruited in each of the 19 Emirate Councils of the state. And uh, yesterday, His Excellency ordered for a recruitment of additional 200 persons to join the community protection guards. And that's why I said, if Busau is not politicizing the security, uh, we challenge him to come and be the Commandant General of this force we have established. It, it, it is comprising of uh, including retired commissioners of police, retired captains in the military, and they are working, and we are preparing them. They are working with the security agencies in Zampara State, and they were given training on uh, weaponry handling, uh, human rights uh, 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 concerns, and every other uh, issues that has to do with the protection of lives and property. Mm. So if Uso is not politicizing the issues, we challenge him to come and be Commandant General of that force okay. so that he can help them for the people uh, secure uh, lives and property. Well, and, Mr. Uh, Sarah, just, just on, on still talking about uh, Mr. Guso, one of the things that he said earlier, you know, we spitted the question the other time, but I'd like you to address it squarely. Uh, Chimelin asked you earlier, what if some go rogue? Now, as you said earlier, there have been attempts by the state government to engage the bandits to desist from what they're doing. What happened to that agreement? What happened to that conversation? What made that effort of government fail? And what is it that makes you so sure that these bandits that you want to attack through the citizens will not buy over some of the citizens that you are arming or empowering to arm themselves against these bandits. What happened to that conversation about them down into maybe maybe you couldn't listen when I, I said Zamfara State was nine months period without an incident of insecurity 
uh, because of that dialogue process. But the issue of conflict interpreneurs, and conflict interpreneurs are found in almost all the sectors, including the security, including the politicians, including the even journalists, people who get what from the crisis. So they supported that success we had initially. And the government, the, 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 the government under the leadership of His Excellency, not relent in its efforts. We came up with another solution, which was shutting down the networks. I made this explanation earlier. Well, uh, so M uh, Mr. Dasara, uh, have you when, then been able to engage these conflict entrepreneurs as you previously engaged the bandits so that they can desist from this act? Well, do, do you know them? <laughs> the issue is, do you know them? Somebody who's trying to sabotage you, you can't know them. You can't know. So what we did was we try as much as possible to give, uh, to give ultimatum to the bandits. And after which, we again engage them in another way by confronting them through shutting down the networks and uh, closing down markets and uh, restricting vehicular movement, which has seriously incapacitated the bandits. And that has brought a lot of success in the fight against the bandits. So uh, you can see the government is not relenting. It's trying so many ways, very hard, to ensure that uh, the number of people are protected. The concerns of the government is how do we protect our people? Mm. Well, how do we uh, save lives and property of the people? That is what we are trying to do. Well, um, Honorable Commissioner, there is a saying, an African saying, that it's only the thief that knows how to find another thief's path on a rock. And I'm wondering if, you know, the bandits whom governments, the state government succeeded with previously, could be useful in finding these people that who you said you don't know, cannot be found. Has, has there been such an effort? What did it produce? Well, what we engage those people who surrendered is to help us to skill kidnap victims. And uh, the Empire State Government is well known and should be appraised for its efforts in securing kidnapped victims. Not only people from the Empire State, even in other states, uh, His Excellency has helped in securing the release of uh, abducted uh, persons. So. Uh, that is how we utilize the bandits who have surrendered, who joined the dialogue and respected. Like I told you, some uh, were, were, were made to, uh, I mean, disrespect the dialogue through the conflict entrepreneurs, which I said we don't know. And uh, we are asking whoever knows people who are sabotaging us uh, should do so. And but, that but, but is why... Commissioner. How did you know that they are conflict entrepreneurs? Sorry? How did the government know that they are conflict entrepreneurs? Yeah, of course. The people who uh, make a lot of gains out of the crisis. Let me give you examples. There are people who take uh, uh, food stuff to the bandits in the forest. There are people who supply them with the drinks, alcohol, and drugs. There are people who supply them with petroleum. There are people who also uh, supply them even with women. So these are the conflict entrepreneurs we are talking about. And we have the informants who always tell them, uh, go to social community. There are a lot of uh, money there, or there are a lot of uh, uh, cattle. So these are the conflict entrepreneurs we are talking about. and. Uh, Many of them engage in sabotaging the efforts of the government in succeeding uh, in the fight against but, You know, listening like to I some of those analyses you've given, identifying some key things that people do for these bandits, many will then ask, wait a minute, if you, if you have those very, very key details, you should have one or two people who will be arrested who knows that these people do this for these other bandits. Doesn't government yeah, know it, any one of them whatsoever? 
If, if you have been following uh, our statements uh, in the past, we said we made so many arrests and many people are undergoing uh, judicial. Uh, so that means you know that they're known. So so so. Uh, yeah, it, it was because you said they were not known. So many just wondered that. But wait a minute, some are in custody, so they should know. Some of these things, you have to keep them uh, in secret. Okay. It's not everything you discuss about security on media organizations. We understand so, that. We understand. Yeah, so, but, but when you say you don't know, it gives a blanket uh, suggestion that nothing is known or people have not been arrested. So just wanted to clarify that bit. But that is why do nothing you have to discuss on security, I mean, about security on media. <laughs> well, Commissioner, um, you know, the police say they don't have any of such communication from the Zamfara states. Have they been informed concerning this directive to procure arms? I didn't say we have already communicated to them. What we said is that we prepared forms and sent to the uh, Emirates where the traditional rulers, the, uh, the locals, will do the, the background checking and allow those who have interest to fill the form from where we take it and send to the uh, police. So this is what we said. Okay. We, we didn't think we have communicated to the police about this. What we said, this is a process we have put in place and we have started the process and we are moving uh, towards uh, ensuring that we are successful. Well, uh, we uh, Honorable planned. Commissioner, some of the analysis that you know you made the other time uh, points to one thing, and there are those who believe that the reason, part of the reason, a fundamental reason we have a high level of insecurity in the country, is because some governors do not allow the local government systems to function efficiently. All insecurity is local, and that references the local government system significantly. What is the body language of Zamfara State, the Zamfara State government, in empowering the local government systems to run as the government that they ought to be, in order to be the first line of defense to checkmate this banditry? In the first place, I don't even believe that uh, um, uh, governors uh, are responsible for the, the insecurity. You see, let us understand the basic and fundamental issues about security in Nigeria. One, we have paucity of funds across the states. Two, we have shortage of manpower among the security personnel. Three, we have diversity of insecurity across the nation, so much that the little manpower we have in the security sector cannot cope with this. And uh, sadly, uh, like I told you, I am still uh, repeating that we have large number of conflict entrepreneurs, uh, even including... Mr. Dasara, the question is around the local government system in uh, Zamfara State. I think, I think you have, you ask question, uh, the, you have, you ask twin questions. And this is the first question I'm talking to you, that even... Outside Nigeria, we have conflict entrepreneurs, those who supply weapons to Nigerians, and they will never like to have Nigeria have peace. So understand this factor. Secondly, uh, the local government uh, uh, system uh, you are talking about, in Zamfara State, we have all it takes to put the local government function, function effectively. We have committees, we have... Uh, uh, security meetings all over, and we, we give them funds that they use to uh, ensure that they provide security within the localities. We have a network of systems which, like I said, we cannot just be sitting down on, on media and start talking about because it has to do with the security. So it is not what people are accusing uh, the governor or government in this regard well, yeah, Mr. Dosara, well, part, of the, part of the answer that I was just hoping, some perspectives that I'm hoping to get, you know, from this is concerning this whole conversation around local government autonomy and all of that, because the local government systems get money, should get money directly 
from the federal allocation straight into their coffers. Now, that speaks to the uh, proposed uh, local government autonomy, financial autonomy, and administrative autonomy that I also believe, and perhaps by the wisdom of the National Assembly, that if the local governments have administrative and financial autonomy, they would be able to take some proactive measures that the state government will only support. They would be at the forefront of ensuring security in their own localities, using the, the traditional institutions that you also referenced the other time directly. It's worked in Nigeria before. Is it something that the state government is, is willing and expecting, expecting to support the House of Assembly in doing, ensuring an autonomous administrative, administrative and financial autonomy for the local government in Zamfara State? Well, you see, uh, what we have in Zamfara State is a common understanding between the local governments and the state government. We have uh, so many demands in terms of infrastructure across the local governments. And what we do is to sit down at the end of the month and look at what resources we have and what other demands do we have from the local governments. And uh, we um, go by the budget, the provision, and uh, establish those structures and infrastructures that are being demanded by the people in the localities. So um, we, we have a clean system here. We, we are not just uh, depriving the local governments from using their funds to do what they want. And we allow them to bring what their people are requiring, the most fundamental, and we look at them. Like we said, security is one of them, and we have been doing... So, Commissioner, uh, we need to bring other people, but just quickly, how do you think this will work? Because you, no matter the forms and the licenses they give, they cannot get beyond the dang gun. These bandits or entrepreneurs, as you say, some of them use AK-47, AK-49. How can the dang gun face an AK-47? It's like taking the knife to a gunfight. You see, um, there is what we call uh, psychological warfare. When I said, okay, um, Chamberlain is having a gun in his house, I would be afraid to just come to Chamberlain's house to attack him because I don't know the type of gun he's having. We didn't say these are the type of weapons we are providing for the people, but what we are doing is to try as well create psychological warfare among the bandits.